New horrifying allegations are surfacing against Hollywood star Mel Gibson. The screenwriter Joe Esterhouse says Mel Gibson often goes on rants about killing his former girlfriend, and he says Gibson frequently makes anti Semitic comments. Esterhouse says Gibson made references that the Holocaust was a lie. But it's the reported threats against Oksana Grigorieva that are bringing the most attention. Esterhouse, in a letter, says Gibson told him, I'm going to kill her. I'm going to have her killed. Gibson's representatives say the actor denies most of the allegations. That's what they said, most of them. And say Esterhouse is upset that his script got rejected. Actually, right now, let's go ahead and listen to a little bit of what Joe Esterhouse said this morning on the Today Show. Um, are, are you planning to release this videotape that you say you have that, uh, that is proof of what you're alleging? I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with the videotape. I'll tell you this. In his response to me, he said that these were utter fabrications. And two paragraphs later, he apologized and said, I want to make a clear apology. If these are fabrications, what is he apologizing for? I don't like to be called a liar. Okay, here to talk about all this is entertainment journalist Kelly Carter of On the Phone, professor of history and, ge history rather, <laughs> and gender myths. <clears throat> he goes switch, sir. He's written extensively about masculinity and the myth of male weakness. All right, Kelly, some of these accusations are in a, a very public letter that Joe Esther House released, but he also claims to have video evidence of this temper as well. Once again, it seems like someone has gotten Mel Gibson on an audio or in a video situation kind of spouting off not only anti-Semitic remarks, but remarks about killing and have, or having his ex-girlfriend, Oksana, killed. You know, um, the, the screenwriter alleges that he says he's befriended, Mel Gibson has befriended two FBI agents mm -hmm. or former FBI agents and that he can get the job done. Obviously, that's pretty harrowing yeah. if he actually has that on tape. But the fact that he's writing it, I think, is interesting because two years ago when, you know, his, his ex-girlfriend you know, those, those tapes got released. She mm -hmm. didn't release them herself, but they got released, and people were hearing him making these very vile threats against her. And she said at the time that she recorded them because she was afraid for her life, and if he killed her, she needed for her mother to know who killed her and how it all went down. And now here we are again. Again. Okay. Um, Hugo, you there, buddy? I sure am. Okay. I, I, I know you've been listening to this, and, and Kelly referenced the fact that um, a couple years ago we also um, heard tapes about Mel Gibson uh, making awful, awful threats. And at the time, Hugo, part of the conversation, it seemed, were comments people saying, perhaps she set him up, or what did she do to make him so angry? And we're saying again, he still has this type um, of rage issue. What, what are your thoughts on some of the comments that were made about um, she, she was the one that was partially to blame for his temper? You know, Michelle, it's, it's such a common phenomenon that we see around issues of men and intimate partner, partner violence. And the phenomenon is, is that we teach women that they are responsible for soothing male anger, that men are naturally unable to control their rage and easily triggered. And as a result, it's a woman's job, especially a wife or a girlfriend's job, to not say triggering things, to not provoke violence, to somehow manage all of that energy. That's especially true with a celebrity like Mel Gibson, and because with celebrities we have this expectation that with their talent is also going to come a lot of explosive volatility. That puts all the pressure on the wife or the girlfriend to manage, to soothe, to calm that volatility. But the fact is, the only one who can control Mel Gibson is Mel Gibson. It's he, a choice he's making. It's not Oksana's issue at all. And Hugo, to your point, um, you know, people, you say, make sometimes exceptions um, for celebrities. And, of course, we know that there are people every day that are living with people that have this type of rage. But, you know, I did see a lot of comments from people who say, he makes movies. That's all I care about. I don't care what else he does behind the scenes. What's your reaction to that? Well, I, I mean, I think we, you know, it's perfectly okay to like his movies, but when he's allowed to continue making films without any consequences, what it says is that a man can be violent towards women in his private life, and at this point, in his case, in his public life, mm -hmm. and not face any really serious consequences. Uh, there's no path to redemption for him that he has to undergo. Uh, he, I mean, he's facing consequences because he's firing his scriptwriters, but 
in terms of facing consequences for his actual abuse of women, mm -hmm. he's not facing any. And as long as we continue to s separate his talent from his violence, then he will be allowed to get away with it. And more troublingly, people will believe that if you're talented enough as a man, you can do virtually anything to women with impunity. You know, Kelly, um, Hugo talked about consequences. Have there been any consequences? What is the studio saying about this? Well, I mean, I think just from, you know, just being a part of the public, you can look and see the consequences mm -hmm. or that he does not have the movie career that he had a decade ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the first six years ago was the first time he got stopped, and that's when the anti-Semitic, you mm -hmm. know, comments were happening. And then two years ago, the thing with his ex-girlfriend. Since then, it's been very hard to get a Mel Gibson film greenlit, you know, and, and to get it in theaters. I mean, the last film that they tried to release, um, it, it was before all of this kind of happened, it was supposed to be an award contention, and it just, wow. quite frankly, you know, didn't. So I'd be really curious to see how he's going to use this to maybe try and repair. That's what this film that he and the screenwriter were working on was supposed about. to be anyway. It was supposed to be kind of his love letter to show that he was no longer an anti-Semite. But then, you know, that's one of the accusations, again, that he's being dealt with. And then, you know, Oksana's attorneys are saying, we want to hear what, what's on this audio tape with what he's talking about mm -hmm. with these allegations about killing her. We may want to open this back up because as of right now, they're sharing custody of their daughter. Yes. And one of her concerns was that she didn't know if she wanted her daughter to be alone with him.